Hey guys, how's it going? I am the Conflict Nerd, hello and welcome back to The Sims 3 and building my ideal home. This is episode 3, A Touch of Normality. I remembered the episode. I've recorded this commentary like three times and I forgot the episode name twice. So we're right here and we're adding in the windows. Once again, just continuing with what we left off with last time. Adding in a bunch of windows because you guys will shout at me if I don't. We're going around now and adding in some wood textures to them because it just looks better, I think. I personally really like that light wood texture. It doesn't stand out too much, but it's there, you're aware of it, and it looks nice. So, generally, most of my houses have a similar, if not the same, wood texture on the likes of doors and windows. I... I don't know why. I haven't lived in a house in real life that's had wooden windows in like 14 years. So, yeah, not quite sure why. Anyway, the touch of normality that this episode is named after comes into play on the main, not the main floor, the top floor. Because on the ground floor we have all of this open space. Everything's very open plan. Up here, on the other hand, we have everything not confined. Confined would be the wrong word. Everything is normal. You know, it's like a normal house that has a, pre a, a set hall, a set living room, a set bedroom. This has two bedrooms, a office, a an artsy room, and a tiny little bathroom. And it's fairly normal. It's a normal layout. It's got the predefined hall, it's got this, it's got that, and I really like it. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Going around here, adding in the final bits of wall, adding in the colour to the walls. Gonna go ahead now and add in the half wall for the balconies themselves, which I really like. I really like the balconies. I think they look kind of fantastic. Sort of. I, I'm not entirely sure what I've put on them, because there's not actually a lot of space on them. So, maybe just one seat, maybe no seats, we'll see what I do with that. That big flat space to the side there is, I don't want to call it a balcony because it's too big to be a balcony, but it's, it's something, I don't bloody know what. On to the patio again though, this is something I hinted at in the last episode, something I do differently. I'm about to add in a trellis. And I've never done this before. I've watched people like uh, Curtis Parody and Creel Sims uh, on their time lapses and their speed builds, whatever you want to call them. They always add like a trellis over certain bits outside. They also do something similar with skylight windows, you could call them that. I've never done it before, I've always thought about doing it, so I went ahead and did it here. And I think it looks pretty good. It's a nice little touch, it's not a set roof. But it did mean we had to get rid of the pillars that we had out on the patio, but I don't think that's much of a loss. Moving on now, to deal with the roof. This was more difficult than it seems, because I wasn't entirely sure what way to round to put it. I am quite happy with how it turned out in the end though, I think it actually looks really good. It, it doesn't look like some ridiculous, half-slanty, half-round, crazy, nutter roof. It's a roof. There's not a lot you can say about it. It goes up and then down the other side, and it does the job. It... I, I don't really think the roof of a house should be a feature. Not in a house like this, anyway. Maybe in one of those modern houses that you see that those fangled kids like to build. One of those houses there, that's a feature, but in this, this is just someone's house, it's my, my ideal home, you know, I don't want something that's obnoxious and looks completely out of place, I want something that looks comfortable, so that's what this is, it's a comfortable little area. What's being built here is the master bedroom, not furnishing it just yet, just laying it out, like I said, and this is the touch of normality. You can see the hall starting to take shape. There's the second bedroom going in, and that wall there, that tiny little triangular room, is going to be a second bathroom. And by bathroom, I mean it's probably going to have a sink and a toilet and nothing else, because there's not a lot of room in there. So probably just a sink and the old toilet. Yeah, I, I that, yeah. 
What we're going to be adding opposite the bathroom, master bedroom, and second bedroom is that one of these rooms is going to be an office. The other one's going to be an artsy room with like a guitar and an easel and all of that stuff in there. That's, that is basically it for interior design on this build. Well, sorry, not interior design, interior layout on this particular build. I don't want something that's... I, I like my open plan ground floor with my homely, comfortable, not too claustrophobic, not too open top floor. I like that. I also like the slightly more old-fashioned wall thing that we have going on here in the master bedroom because once again it comes back to that whole aspect of feeling comfortable and it feeling warm especially. I can't stand the fact that my room at the moment is usually freezing so I want something warm. This second bedroom though I wanted to feel quite neutral so I went with a bit of a, it's a bit of a pinkish carpet but I feel like it doesn't stand out too much it's a very neutral color because it's desaturated so that's what the idea was there and then it was a matter of thinking wait a minute most of the house inside is red so that had to change and I went once again with something that was quite neutral in quite a bit of contrast to my previous build and what I've done in the past, most of the house is actually not necessarily a neutral colour but a desaturated, toned down shade of blue. And that's going to be happening any second now once I get rid of that car. Here we go, go for the toned down shade of blue that I really like. It feels... I, I'm talking a lot about how it feels, I know it's a game alright, but... I, I, I like to imagine what the Sims would be feeling if they were real people. Yeah. This the house is weird in that sense. It should be really cold and clinical inside based off of the colour scheme. But once you see what it looks like with the furniture in there, it's actually a really pleasant environment to be in. If you zoom the camera right down and eventually give up the download link for this house and all that stuff so you can do it yourself. But I think, personally, I think the colour scheme turned out really well. And that is it for today, folks, and this particular episode. I sincerely hope you've enjoyed it. I've been the Conflict Nerd, and I'll see you next time.